In this video, we're going to look at an E1 reaction that is stereoselective. So first we're going to draw out the mechanism, figure out the products, and then we'll talk about why it's a stereoselective reaction. On the left we have our alcohol. The carbon that's bonded to the OH is our alpha carbon, and the carbon next to that would be our beta carbon. So this beta carbon has two beta protons, because we know in our mechanism, in our E1 mechanism, we're going to lose a beta proton. On the left here, this carbon's next to the alpha carbon, but there are no hydrogens on that carbon, so we only have to worry about the carbon on the right. Sulfuric acid is a strong acid, and it will protonate our alcohol. So I'll just draw in an H plus in here to save some time. So a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen picks up a proton from sulfuric acid. And let's draw what we would have now. So I'll put in my benzene ring right in here. So let's put in those electrons and I'll put in my carbon chain. And if we're protonating our OH, let me draw this wedge in here. Now oxygen would have two bonds to hydrogen, one lone pair of electrons on the oxygen, and the oxygen would have a plus one formal charge. So let me show those electrons here. So these electrons in magenta pick up a proton from sulfuric acid and we could say that it formed, uh, it formed this bond right in here. And then we also know there's a hydrogen on this carbon going away from us in space, so I'll draw in that hydrogen. And then for our, for our beta carbon here, we know we have two beta protons, I'll put those in. One would be on a wedge, and one would be on a dash like that. And then I'll go ahead and draw in the CH3 right here. The next step in our E1 mechanism is loss of our leaving group. So now we have water as a leaving group, and we know water is a good leaving group. These electrons in here can come off onto the oxygen, and we would lose water. We're taking a bond away from this carbon, so we're going to form a carbocation. So actually, let me just go down here real fast and get some more space, and let me draw in our carbocation. So we would have our benzene ring right here. So let me put in these electrons. And we would have, let me draw in the chain like that. We would have a plus one formal charge on this carbon. So after the water leaves, we get a plus one formal charge right here. We know in an E1 mechanism, we need a stable carbocation, and this is a benzylic carbocation, so it's very stable, because we can draw several resonance structures. I won't draw them all in to save time, but just to give you an idea, I could take these electrons and move them out to here, and uh, let me go ahead and draw that now. So if I move those electrons out, I would have a plus one charge, right? I took a bond away from, let me use red for this, I took a bond away from this carbon, so now that's where I have a plus one charge, so a plus one charge right here, and then I would have these other pi electrons in the ring. And you could keep going and draw more resonance structures, for example, you could move these electrons into here, but I won't do that, um, I just wanted to show you that this is a benzylic carbocation that is resonance stabilized. So let's go back up to here, so we can uh, figure out our products for this reaction. And I also want you to think about the possibility of free rotation around this sigma bond here. So there's free rotation around this sigma bond. And let me go ahead and draw in one way to view our carbocation here. So I'm going to call this benzene ring here a phenyl group. So I'm going to write pH for a phenyl group. And then this will be our carbocation. So we need to try to show planar geometry around our carbocation. And this carbon right here, the one in magenta, is an sp2 hybridized carbon in our carbocation. So there is an unhybridized p orbital. Let me draw in that p orbital right here. And there's a plus one formal charge on this carbon. There's a plus one formal charge, so that's our carbocation. And then we would have a carbon right here. And since we know there's free rotation around the sigma bond, so over here, so this arrow that I drew, let me just highlight it in red, I'm gonna pick a particular conformation. I'm gonna have one of the hydrogens parallel with the p orbital, and another hydrogen over here, and then that would mean a methyl group right here. So this is one possible conformation 
confirmation. And to show you how you get this confirmation, let's go and look at a video. And in the video, I have the methyl group as being red, so it's easier to see. And the phenyl group over here, the phenyl group is going to be purple in the video. On the left we have our carbocation, so you can see I put in these paddles here for the p orbital. And the geometry around this carbocation is planar, so hopefully you can see that with the bonds here. And we have our purple for our phenyl group. We know that we have free rotation about this single bond, so I'm going to rotate to get to the confirmation that we saw earlier here. So this confirmation has a carbon-hydrogen bond that's parallel with the p orbital and can donate some electron density into that p orbital. In an E1 mechanism, we take a proton. So I'm going to take this proton here, so pretend like I'm taking it away. But now we can see the alkene that forms. This would be the trans alkene with the bulky phenyl group on an opposite side of the double bond from our methyl group. So we know that there's another possible conformation that has another carbon-hydrogen bond parallel with our p orbital, and so it can donate some electron density into the p orbital there. If I took away this proton, you can see we would get the cis alkene for the product. So in this case, the bulky phenyl group and methyl group would be on the same side of the double bond. As we saw in the video, the p orbital of the carbocation aligns parallel with the breaking carbon-hydrogen bond. So our p orbital would be in this direction and our carbon-hydrogen bond would be parallel with that. So the electron density from this bond can be donated into the p orbital. So we know in an E1 mechanism, a weak base comes along at this point and takes that proton. So we're gonna take this proton here and those electrons in light blue would move in to form our double bond. And this confirmation gives us the trans product. So let me go ahead and draw in our trans product here. So we have our phenyl group, and then we have our double bond, and then we would have our methyl group, so CH3. So this would be the trans product. And we know that a different confirmation gives us the cis product. So let's draw in the other confirmation or the confirmation that gives us the cis product here. So here's our phenyl. And then we would have our carbon, our carbocation. There's a hydrogen going away. And then this would be, let me show the, uh, the planar geometry around that carbocation. So we'd have our p orbital in here like that. And a plus one formal charge on that carbon. And then we would have our other hydrogen is now the carbon hydrogen bond is parallel with our p orbital. And so this was after we rotated it. So it's a different conformation than the one on the left. And so this conformation has the methyl group over here like that. And so now, again, we have this electron density right, that can be donated into this p orbital. And so our base comes along and takes this proton. And if that happens, then our electrons move into here and we would form the cis product. So let me draw in the cis product. So we'd have our, our phenyl group and then our double bond and then our methyl group, CH3. So this is the cis product. So now that we've figured out our products, let's talk about why this reaction is said to be stereoselective. So we formed two stereoisomers as our product. We have a trans isomer, which is actually 95% of our product, and a cis isomer, which is only about 5% of our product. And we can explain that by looking at our two conformations down here. So the conformation on the left has the bulky phenyl and methyl group relatively far away from each other in space, so decreased steric hindrance. But the conformation on the right has these two bulky groups pretty close together in space. And so that destabilizes this conformation. And that's why we don't get as much of the cis product. So the trans product forms uh, because of decreased steric hindrance and our trans product is more stable. And so this reaction is said to be stereoselective. So we had a preference for the formation of the more stable isomer, which is the trans product.